debate uh, over Bitcoin uh, and an ETF and crypto. We've been uh, talking to the CEO of Grayscale this morning, obviously very frustrated with the SEC's decision. Um, what do you make of it? Listen, it's a, it's a missed opportunity for the country. Uh, we've had the mantle of financial services leadership for 100 plus years. And the fact that the SEC is moving in this direction where the Europeans are allowing for a cash ETF, the Canadians are allowing for a cash ETF, just a huge missed opportunity. You know, I, the SEC now stands for Stop Economic Creativity. And I think that is a terrible thing for the country. Uh, moreover, they won't even give you the regulations, Andrew. You know, they, they've hired more people in the enforcement division. And so the venture capital community, the crypto community is like, OK, so we'll find out what to do if you're investigating us. Why don't you put down in writing what the regulations are and the rules are? We're all law abiding citizens and we'll happily abide by the rules. And so this vagueness and this uncertainty, I think, is hurting the United States and it'll hurt our intellectual capital and our capital formation going forward. So I hope they stop it. Welcome, Welcome to, to the Crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And we have Grayscale deny the spot Bitcoin ETF. And what is the message they're sending that the United States is behind? That's all you're going to keep hearing is that we're behind the other countries. Because then we get another country adding a spot Bitcoin ETF starting next month in the eurozone but with all the bitcoin spot etfs it still has not adjusted the price why because there is no regulation and remember guys the regulation that they want to do they want to do a blanket regulation for the globe and we're seeing every country moving over to the digital economy in order for bitcoin to get pensions 401ks they have to have regulation. And that's the reason why you haven't seen it in the price. But we know fourth quarter of this year, going into next year, we're going to see regulation. I definitely see a spot Bitcoin ETF in the US by the end of the year. But definitely, guys, we'll have all the regulation laid down in 2023 because we know ISO is going to be here. Remember, guys, they have to destroy the global legacy market and then also destroy the U.S. dollar as the world reserve currency. Of course, we're still going to have the United States stable coin, still going to have some power, but we know the world reserve currency is going to be with China the dragon. America to Babylon, as we can clearly see, is already falling. And we're starting to see... China, the dragon, and the BRICS nations rising. Not only going back to gold, but of course, the robots, algorithms, and drones are already set up in the emerging markets. But before they can turn on the fourth industrial revolution, because the American people will not accept it. So they have to bring up the big distraction. And we hear those drums are beating especially if you've been listening to the NATO speeches. Those drums are definitely beating. And if you have my New World Order book, you know this was set up a long time ago. Anthony Sutton told us exactly how it was going down. And the crypto teacher wrote about it a long time ago. Because, you know, when it comes to the New World Order, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Is there a precedent for this sort of action to sue the SEC for a rejection? Well, Melissa, it's been a busy 12 hours for the Grayscale team. Of course, last night getting the SEC's decision, we were, of course, very disappointed. But as an organization, we were ready. Um, regulators do get sued, um, and it does happen frequently. Last night, after receiving the SEC decision, our attorneys almost immediately filed a petition for review with the appellate court in D.C., and that starts the litigation process contesting the SEC's decision, which we, of course, vehemently disagree with. What is the core uh, thrust of that, of that suit? Um, if you can just give me sort of the elevator pitch, so to speak, on, on why the SEC is wrong in this decision. Well, we've laid out these arguments throughout uh, the last couple of months leading up to this decision, um, really looking at the fact that the SEC is acting arbitrary and capricious 
by continuing to approve Bitcoin futures-based ETFs while continuing to deny spot Bitcoin ETFs. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the Administrative Procedure Act, which is really what governs the way that regulators have to govern, they have to be treating like issues alike. And in this case, they're not. They're actually discriminating against issuers like Grayscale who are trying to you know, bring a product further into the U.S. regulatory perimeter here. What is the sales pitch right now for prospective GBTC investors, Michael? A lot of folks had gotten on board GBTC early on when there was no other way to easily invest in Bitcoin. Um, but now, you know, more recently, in hopes that this would be turned into ETF and that investors would actually capture that arbitrage, which right now is about 28 percent to net asset value. Um, if the GBTC is not converted to an e ETF, what's the, what's the pitch? Why be in this that doesn't track the underlying so well? Well, certainly a lot of investors are putting capital into Bitcoin even after this recent, you know, sell off. And if they can commit capital to GBTC at, you know, let's say 70 cents on the dollar versus putting assets into Bitcoin and they believe that our common sense arguments underpinning this lawsuit will ultimately prevail and we will be able to overturn the SEC's decision. We are not going to stop. We're going to put the full resources of the firm behind this lawsuit. This is what investors want and, quite frankly, what, what they deserve. Um, when we take a step back, Melissa, and you and I have been talking about this for years, GBTC was born in the United States in 2013. We've worked to turn this into the world's largest Bitcoin fund. It is invested today by millions of Americans in all 50 states. So the fact that a U.S. regulator is shunning the opportunity to bring this further into the regulatory perimeter and give investors more disclosure, you know, more protections, this is an unbelievably missed opportunity on their part. We're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort. And China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their home countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols? Who un controls the underlying standards? of the future of money will control the future of money. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. 
But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.